The executions that took place inside the arenas of ancient Rome were never quick and easy. They were, instead, a public display of cruelty and savage creativity. Brutal executions were meant to keep the public in line and show those who stepped out of line what would happen to them if they did not immediately change their ways. Public executions were intentionally meant to be humiliating and degrading to the condemned. There was to be absolutely no honor in his or her death. Also, to further shame them, criminals were often brought into the arena in the nude. In the video today, we're looking at 10 of the most brutal methods of execution. Number 10. Net and Bull Animals played a large part in many of Rome's executions. Amphitheaters across the Roman Empire had been built to hold bears, leopards, bulls, alligators, and many other deadly animals. All of these animals were used at some point to execute criminals. One popular method of execution involved placing a criminal in a net. A net was either hung in the air or was left on the ground and a bull was brought out. The animal attendants, or slaves, would then antagonize the bull until it viciously attacked the netted criminal. After the criminal had been flung about and gored by the animal's horns, he or she – women were not excluded from this form of execution – was then taken out of the netting. Their throat was then sliced to ensure their total death. Besides being placed inside a net, female criminals might also be tied to the bullhorns in order to be gored to death. Number 9. Death by the Sword The sentence of Ad Gladium was death by the sword. Now, this could mean just about anything as long as the prisoner was killed with a sword. In early reign, beheadings were rather common, but when it came to presenting bloodshed during the games at the arena, the people demanded brutal deaths that included suffering, and lots of bloodshed. Sometimes criminals were made to face off with a gladiator. These events showed desperate men, sometimes armed and sometimes unarmed, who had no choice but to either confront the fully armed gladiator or run around inside the arena until they were captured by the blade. Criminals and non-citizens of Rome were forced to face humiliating deaths. It was part of their punishment, as a quick death was not enough to show the enemies of Rome that traitors and slaves were at the complete mercy of the ruling class. The emperor controlled both the lives of his people as well as their deaths, and it was done without mercy. Number 8. Crucifixion Crucifixion is perhaps the most well-known form of Roman execution. When it came to the arena and the exhibition of death, bringing about the end of criminal or slave had to excite the crowd, and crucifixion could deliver the wow of mortal suffering to those viewers. Death by crucifixion in the arenas was no doubt extremely painful. Oftentimes, the criminal's legs were broken before he was suspended. When the criminal was in position, he would slowly die by asphyxiation and blood loss. Despite his popularity, archaeologists have only discovered the remains of two people who died by crucifixion. Both of the remains were male, and both showed evidence of having a nail driven through their feet to a wooden cross. There was no evidence that a nail had been driven through their hands or wrists, so it is believed that their arms were simply tied into position. Number 7. Trampled to Death Elephants were often featured in the amphitheaters across the Roman Empire. Sometimes they were simply put on display, and a few of the elephants were trained to do tricks for the crowd. Elephants were also featured in the great beast hunts inside the arena where emperors and other members of the ruling elite would kill them with spears. Because of their size and stature, elephants were also used in executions. For example, in 167 BC, General Aemius Paulus had elephants trample the captured men who had attempted to desert his army. This form of execution was also used in the arenas. Slaves and criminals were thrown to the enraged and frightened elephants, and they were trampled to death. Any who survived the trampling would have their throats cut. Being trampled by elephants was considered to be an undignified death among the Romans, and a well-deserved form of execution for the traitors of Rome. Number 6. The Fire Dance Death by fire would have been a horrible vision of pain and suffering within the arena. Slaves and criminals who were given this sentence were made to wear colorful clothing that had been soaked in a flammable substance. Then, while standing in the center of the arena, they would have been ignited. As their clothes burned, the victims were forced to dance for the Roman public as the pain of the fire burned away their flesh. Their shrieks of pain would have been horrifying to us, but to the ancient Romans, the death cries were not only entertainment, but the auditory proof of a well-deserved death. Under Nero, death by fire took on new heights of cruelty. For the unfortunate people condemned by fire, Nero had them wear clothing of papyrus stripped in wax and resin. The victims were essentially turned into human candles, and when they were lit, they burned brightly. Number 5. Self-castration or death Sometimes those who were sentenced to death were given an alternative, although that alternative was never very pleasant. For example, one convict was given the choice between being burned alive or sticking his hand into a fire to reenact a scene from Roman history. 
The convict, as would any sensible person, chose to stick his hand in the flame in the hopes of delaying his eventual death. Self-castration was also offered as an alternative to a painful death in the arena. Wanting reenactments of the mythical self-castrating Attis, a slave or criminal might be offered the role. The only way historians believe that the victim would have agreed to such a terrible fate was by offering the victim a choice. Either die by the hands of absolute cruelty or perform this terrible deed which might allow you to live the rest of your life as a slave and eunuch. Number 4. Mock Battles the executions of prisoners of war, criminals, and slaves took place between the morning beast hunts and the afternoon gladiatorial events. There were, under normal circumstances, just a small group of people to be executed. These small groups of convicts would die together, alone or in pairs. However, on rare extravagant occasions, a large group of people, usually prisoners of war, were scheduled to die in the arena. During these great events, the head of the event, usually the emperor, would plan out immense battle reenactments that required anywhere from hundreds to even thousands of victims. Mock lands and naval battles were staged using the prisoners of war as sacrificial players. The battles were to the death and always drew a huge crowd because the outcomes of the battles were unpredictable. Number 3. Mythological Executions in the ancient Roman mind, it was not enough to simply read the myths of Greece or act them out on the stage. Instead, the Romans chose to have the myths reenacted in the flesh, blow for blow. For female criminals who were sentenced to die in the arena, this often meant reenacting the sex scenes. Unfortunately, those sex scenes often included animals. As for one of the events involving Lucian the Ass and a condemned woman, a wild panther was set loose after the deed was done and put a final end to the bound woman. Number 2. Killed by Wild Cats Ad Bestias was a sentence where criminals were killed by wild beasts, and it could be performed in a number of different ways. In one account of death by beasts, the murderer was strapped to a trolley and placed before a leopard. An arena slave cracked his whip and drove the wild cat into a maddened frenzy. It grabbed the criminal's head between its giant paws and proceeded to bite and claw him until blood poured out of his body. Being tied in place, there was no way the man could fight back, and it forced him to endure the true horrors of his punishment. In other accounts of wild cats used in executions, the victim was tied to a post that had been set up in the arena for such events. The cat would be let loose, and the victim shredded as the crowd cheered. Sometimes criminals were handed wooden swords and were sent into the arena to fight off a wild animal who had been deliberately angered by the slaves. These criminals had no hope of beating back the animals with a wooden sword, but the moment of death would be prolonged as the victims desperately tried to fight back against the animal's jaws and claws. One method of execution that was favored by the audience was to simply allow the criminal to run around the arena. The wild cat or cats were set free to chase after the victim until he was caught and sufficiently mauled and battered. There were detailed specifications on how long a death by beast should take. Because there were plenty of executions to be completed within a certain amount of time, executions by animals could not take long. But, of course, on the other hand, they didn't want those executions to be too quick. Those who managed to survive a wild cat attack usually had their throats sliced open, so there was really no hope of escaping death. Number 1. Under Rule of the Pope it would be erroneous to blame all of the brutal executions that took place in the Colosseum on the ancient Romans. While arguments can be made that the pagan executions were beyond brutal, the same can be said of the executions that occurred after Rome had been Christianized. By the 700s AD, the once great Colosseum had fallen into terrible condition. It was no longer a place for games, but a place for public punishment and execution. For example, under Pope Stephen III, a criminal was taken to the Colosseum and had his eyes and tongue savagely ripped out. Eventually, executions were performed elsewhere, and for a time, the Colosseum became an open market. Later still, it was used for dwelling spaces and workshops. Other amphitheaters throughout the former Roman Empire were turned into safe havens, homes, and fortresses. Some were even turned into places of worship where the Christian religion would obliterate the region's pagan past. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If you're looking for something else from me as well, why not check out my podcast? It's called The Brain Food Show. If you just search Brain Food in iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find that. So do check that out. And as always, thank you for watching.